future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at UBNRadio.com. Heidi selects all out of the friend zone. <laughs> That's so dreamy. <laughs> That's a girl's favorite movie. Sexy. <laughs> to think that they were stuck on an island with nothing, no one, nobody loved them. They were all alone. They didn't have a mother. How was she supposed to know that she got her period and she got pregnant? She didn't know why he was always playing with himself or, you know, why, you know, things were going on, that, you know, the funny thoughts that she had. But I'd like to say something to mothers. Thank you for being around. Here's my thank you letter to my mother. Dear mother, I know we haven't always agreed on everything, and I'm much different than you are. You're really conservative, and I respect that, and I'm a little wild, and I oftentimes have wondered if maybe... You were always mad at me because I was a little more wild than I should have been. But either way, I thank you. Because if I didn't have you as conservative as you are, I would have been a little too wild for the room. In this case, I learned how to keep my clothes on most of the time. Oh, and P.S. I really did not mean to buy the dress that showed cleavage to Grandma's funeral. I love you, Mother, and thank you for always teaching me how to wear my clothes. Love, Heidi Selexa. <laughs> Thank you, mothers. It's so great because it's true. You know, my mother was a nudist, but nobody knew it. She was sneaky. She'd come home and take her clothes off and run in the bathtub before anyone knew it because she didn't want it. She was a nurse and she didn't want the clothes to be dirty, at, you know, in the house. So she would leave the garage door up as she pulled her car in. No wonder why the boys were always around, especially as teenagers. And I'm not kidding when I say that. But somehow she managed to whip those clothes off, throw them in the wash machine, and run into the house and get into the hot bathtub and sterilize herself before anyone saw her, except me. So I started doing that. However, my timing with the garage door being open or shut was not as quite as good as hers. <laughs> I will get there, though. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> Apparently, you can get arrested for that. Whatever. Running around naked. I mean, come on. You know, not everyone has the money to buy clothes. And sometimes they're a little uncomfortable, and when they're see-through anyway, why are you spending money to buy them when they're just going to see through them anyway? <laughs> just run around naked. <laughs> We've got a fabulous show for mothers today. I have got a fabulous, wonderful, and fun uh, Emmy Award-winning costume designer from one of the most sexiest movies out well it was ever made it's not out now I mean it's still out it's apparently on Netflix they won't let you get it because it's so good even though it was made like 40 years ago or 30 whatever and then also on uh, YouTube it only gives you little clips of it you have to actually buy the movie I mean who buys a movie anymore can I just see it for free but it's called the Blue Lagoon and his name is Jean-Pierre Doilach and he's won, he's won an Emmy for Battlestar Galactica, which I personally think is one of the sexiest. Why is today all about sexy when it's Mother's Day? Oh, that's because they're sexy and they deserve sex, too. Oh, Heidi, stop it! I'm sorry, I'm just being really inappropriate today. Smack myself. But I'm just saying that this guy knows how to clothe and, and dress people appropriately or whatever is written in the scripts. He also did it, A Time to Remember with Jane Seymour and Christopher uh, Reeves, who we all love. But uh, let's start with uh, The Blue Lagoon. Is Do I have my, my French man on the phone? Hello, Frenchie. Are you there? Hi. Hi, D. Heidi Ho, the hostess well, with the mostess, or in some cases, not much. Uh, oh, well, 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 what are you wearing? How are you today? Well, I'm fabulous. How are you? I'm great. I'm in Hawaii, and I just got the orchids delivered for this wedding that I'm doing, and they are so gorgeous. I mean, you've never seen peach and light pink orchids in your life before like this that are going on the headdress. It's kind of like Blue Lagoon that you were talking about. Except, you know, everybody talks about Blue Lagoon and all its nudity. There was none. Absolutely well, none in the I whole know. film. I except know. for a couple scenes when they were swimming. It was just <laughs> oh, the well. illusion that was made 
to make them look so wonderfully and well, you, primitive. Well, and the, yeah. whether you know it or not, because very few people think there were any costumes in the film, every single garment in the film was made to give it authenticity and realism. And you made those garments, right? I made everything. Here's a great story. We had to have natives in the film to portray cannibals. So I did research, and at the time, cannibals at the turn of the century only wore the scalps from their victims as they knotted together as skirts around their loins. Ooh. And so well, that sounded sexy. I... we looked all over town in L.A. and found old ratty wigs that had been discarded and bought them for nothing and tore them apart and had them coated with pink latex with a little red smattering to make it look like blood. And we stitched them together with thongs, and we sent them to the islands. And when these new, religiously uh, reformed natives who were going to play the extras saw these things, they were both because they thought they were real, and they didn't want to wear anything like that. <laughs> oh, my God. So you were that good that you were actually given just a few pieces of hair and things to to make what they wanted and you did it that was so believable that even the natives in fiji where it was shot thought oh my god i don't want to wear it because i'm going against my my it's all culture. in the book I, I i was surrounded with wonderful people randall clyde who directed it was fabulous nestor almendros who won the academy award for days of heaven was the cinematographer and there's just no words to say about brooke shields and christopher atkins they were just the most perfect actors you could ever work with. Okay, wait, wait now, in your, in, in, your, in your new book out, The Naked Truth, which you can get on Amazon, The Naked Truth, which <laughs> this is supposed the to be naked The Naked truth. Show. Um, it, it talks the, about how lovely... Me on the front of it, naked. It's a joke on the fact that I asked so many people in my life to take off their clothes so Ooh. I could do my job. Well, who did you ask to take your, their clothes off? Everyone you styled, or tell me the details. Need the juice? Well, Give me the juice. When you an actor or an actress, you ask them all to come in and take Naked. off their clothes down to nothing. And it's a so that couch. we can take specific measurements and make costumes that fit. You know, costume designing is not like ready-to-wear. We build clothes and character uh, according to what is written in the script. It's not just you know, oh, pink dress, and it materializes. It's it's years and years of like, practice, and it's also great amount of research when we do something. And the same thing was included in the Blue Lagoon, as was somewhere in time in Battlestar Galactica, and a lot of the things I did. And that's why I wrote the book because many people don't understand that uh, the difference. And um, this book gives people an opportunity to understand what the real side of Hollywood was like before glamour began to disappear. You know, you're right, and let's talk about that. I mean, you did classic styling clothing, like, with the time to remember, and we will get back to the, you know, uh, Somewhere nudity. in time. So, well, excuse me, I don't know where. I've been in that's, another I've time another zone. I've been in another film. It's uh, often uh, done. That's no problem. No, 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 it's not. It is a problem because I know the movie very well, and I love the movie, and my mother used to say to me, she goes, you know, honey, men like classy women like Jane Seymour. And I was like, well, and she goes, do you see her showing cleavage? <laughs> and now I have the costume designer on <laughs> there with me. When you did the, the her, you drew, like, I don't know, if we, have a, we have a sketch of you. By the way, you're a phenomenal sketch artist. Thank you very much. I Thank mean, you. those are your sketches. Really yeah, you, I'm sorry, what was that? Those are your sketches, the, the sketches oh, that yes. you. Oh, yes, I, do, I do, do all of my sketches. I've done them for Years and years and years. Yeah, phenomenal. I started out being a sketch artist for major fashion magazine when instead of photographs like they do now, they had artists draw the pictures of the dresses on, on figurines. Yeah. And that's how I got started. And uh, it was through that and the fact that I brought I my spandex. was acting for a while that I uh, got involved in costume design. And then I studied it for years and got a master's degree before I was really even working in the field. Oh, yeah, well, right. But what I was saying was, is when you did Jane Seymour and Christopher Reeves, did 
they walk into the dressing room and you had somewhat of an of a idea of what the costume was going to be and they walked in oh, and they, so they, they took their clothes off and they were naked and then you went oh the, i know the what director, to do it was done from the script uh it said in the script that he found a suit that was he bought in a second hand store and we actually filmed that but it was cut out of the story showed him buying the suit but he was misled by the clerk and he bought a suit that was uh, uh I believe it was like 13 years old. And so when he appeared in the past in the suit, everybody looked at him because he was very conspicuous because he was wearing real old clothes. And it was a major part of the film, just as much as Elise, the leading lady's character, was that she had been an actress and she had traveled abroad and her clothes had to reflect a certain amount of future look, meaning advanced look, not futuristic, mm -hmm. but it was like she was on top of clothes like nobody else was at the time because she had just come from Paris. And so she when, you're, when, you're, when you're designing the outfits and when you're thinking of how to, is this what goes on in your head? You're like, okay, this is what the writer wants. This is what's in the script. This is my actress, my uh, actor. This never, is my okay, body. That's what it is. It's written in stone. You don't. But you uh, do so well. Perfect. I mean, what you do is Pardon what most me? people don't do. Like you can, you can create what they want out of things and, and, that other people can't. I've seen your. I mean, you did battle. You won an Emmy for Battlestar Galactica. Did you know that the little cute little robot guy? What was his name? I don't know, little robot guy, little Roby or whatever his name was. You know, <laughs> it's like yeah. there are evil men over there, and he's barely moving. You're like, oh, let's make him kind of cute and sexy. I mean. <laughs> Whatever you do, you have like a special kick in Buck Rogers. I saw that, you know, all the, the costumes. Um, well, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. But it, it, it's not really that way. It's really what who you're working for and what they want. All right. No, I don't know. Let's just talk about the costumes for Buck, for Battlestar <laughs> Galactica. It was Glenn Larson. Glenn Larson had ideas, and he uh, and I would bring sketches in. He would mark over my sketches and make it more like this and more like that. And he sort of inspired me to do what was eventually the Cylons and the Colonial Warriors, you know, and uh, everyone, the Ovians and everything in it. Okay. Um, you know, no man is an island and you must work together with people. It's a collaboration. I it's know. Not... I won't pump you up anymore. I'm sorry. I'm just, you know, blowing <laughs> no, you up I here. No, but I think that's good because... I, it, that's what I feel mm -hmm. that I tried to say in my book. You say is you need to you work have together. To do good. Yeah. You have to do good in life. It doesn't matter if you're the best. And it doesn't matter about faux gold-plated statues. You should make contributions to life. Uh, we're put here for a reason, I believe, and making a contribution of goodness is what it's all about. Oh, and sure so is. to all you mothers out there who have done wondrous jobs over the years, I applaud you greatly because... I have had uh, uh, numerous women in my life. June Lockhart Ooh. was one of my wow. greatest friends, and she was Lassie's mother. She was known for that. Lassie, June we love Lassie. Still, mm -hmm. She was on television as, as Lassie's mother, and she was known as one of television's all-time classic rough. mothers. Hi, Mommy. And I, I've known <laughs> them all, and uh, I worked with Barbara Billingsley and Leave it to Beaver. Ooh, what'd she look uh, like these naked? These women Did you are see really her naked? courageous women to take the job that they have in hand, and I couldn't applaud them further. So congratulations and happy Mother's Day. Did you get to see them naked? I mean, I'm Did just... Did I get to see who naked? I just wanted Barbara Billingsley. What did she look like naked? I just want to know. Well, I mean, Barbara you said Billingsley you saw... Billingsley was in her 70s, and she wore a conservative slip and gave me the ability to see what I needed to see. Uh, I've seen <laughs> lots of uh, People bombshells. Naked. I'm sure you're more interested in bombshells naked than mothers. Yeah, so tell I've me who's been naked. My I... favorite story is when I did Battlestar Galactic and I met uh -huh. with the wonderful Swedish actress, Britt Eklund, mm -hmm. and I asked her to step behind the curtains and take off her things so we could take measurements. Take your things and off. And usually I walk, I pull back the curtain, and some of the girls are usually in panties and a and <laughs> bra, which is just wonderful. But I pull back the curtains, and Britt was standing there, Ooh. and she was wearing clear, see-through spring Oh. white gloves, pearl studs, and an ivory bracelet. See through and I said, why? Ooh. And nothing else. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I said, why 
the white gloves. And she says, oh, darling, I never take off my gloves unless it's for something special. Oh, darling. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> you're like, whoa, tell me what's special. <laughs> Ooh, that's sexy. <laughs> So, now, Brooke Shields, I know she was 14, so you probably didn't get to see her naked, and that was a good thing. Um, but Nobody the, saw her naked. Yeah, well, I don't... Her mother was there every minute, and her mother, Terry Shields, was the most wonderful woman in the world, oh. and she never interfered, but she just protected Brooke. And I thought she was controlling. My she, mother... She took care of herself. She was a great girl. My mother took me out of show business, out of acting, when I was 12, because she said, you don't want to be like Christy McNichol and Brooke Shields. Um, you know, and, and, and then I was like, no, you're going to be controlling like her mother. And she's like, her mother's just looking out for her. You'll know someday. <laughs> and so, like, you know, as kids, we always want... We always want what we think is best for us. You know, we're like, give it to me now, you know. And uh, then you have like a mom who comes in and then you're like, I hate you, mommy. And then all of a sudden down the road, you're like, wow. I mean, Brooke Shields was so hot and sexy. And, I, you know, I would like for you to make me Heidi jeans, like Brooke jeans. And, you know, because I got the booty. I put Jean-Pierre on my rear end for you today. I'm making a new line of jeans Ooh. for you. Oh, that's so great. They're, yeah. They're going to have a, 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 a vinyl clear slip through plastic crotch <gasps> and we'll call them showman defer <laughs> <laughs> oh I think that you would love those <laughs> wouldn't you your mother would turn over in her grave and kill me <laughs> don't be foolish girl <laughs> Well, we're Armenian. I mean, we're hairy, but, you know, not down there. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the see-through, you know. <laughs> Jean-Pierre, oh, you, you, like you, you, you might win another Emmy. Yeah, for... They'll just be about as exciting as my spandex pants were. You know, I'm not the person who invented spandex, but I was probably the very first to use them. And they made Time magazine. I did... A wonderful act with Leslie Ann Warren. This is all in the book. It's like in chapter three, I think. Uh, and Leslie Ann was wonderful. I made her this fabulous outfit with purple Toreador pants with boots. Mm. And she was a dancer, and she I'm had to move, and she was working on a stage that was no bigger than a postage stamp. So we had to have something that really gave. And at the time... There was a fabric spandex. Came out called spandex mm -hmm. that was made with lycra that was used during the war. And I made her these pants, and they took off like crazy. And about three years later, when I was doing The Valley of the Dolls, I went into the department stores, and my original pattern that I had sold and the idea was all over the place. You could buy them in every color of the rainbow, and uh, they were less than what I originally had to pay to have them made. So and, and they're not, they're not that see-through either. I mean, you can, I run in spandex every day. And, you know, well, this... that's today. Yes, today it's become a very, uh, a, a very sport fabric. And uh, I don't know how. And I, I have a, a very... Uh, you don't know how it works I, as I a sport. I thought so on that when I designed Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Because I made everybody wear white spandex. Ooh, and there was a, a lot of actors who absolutely hated me. <laughs> did, did they look hot? I sorry, I watched it last night, and I've got white spandex pants. But, you know, um, I'm wearing a white spandex dress for you today. And that's why when you oh. come back to L.A. after you're, you know, in Hawaii, running around naked, doing the wedding, naked, um, that you will come back and come on the show live, and I'll show you my spandex in honor of you. But uh, spandex, uh, I, I've watched the show. Oh, and I was like, wow, they're all wearing spandex. And you know that those little robot guys underneath are wearing spandex because they stretch. <laughs> yeah, the whole, all of the, um, right? all of the <laughs> uniform, all, and all the Cylons and all the, the uh, I, Tweaky, his name was in, uh, oh, yeah, in, Tweaky. in Buck Rogers. Is that the little all cute of the guy? All the costumes, the foundation for them were spandex. And then... We vacuum formed pieces of, of plastic that was usually white, and then we had them dipped in uh, silver, oh. uh, like paint, Ooh, laminated almost, gilded, like gold leaf, but yeah. it was silver. 
And that's how, and then they were all stuck together with pieces of Velcro on the spandex and on these pieces. And that's how they moved in the film because the spandex gave and the pieces that looked like they were all heavy metal stuff really were not, they were light plastic. And all because of you. After they manipulate. You won the Emmy for uh, Battlestar Galactica. How did yes, that? I was very honored. It was how did really, that feel? Um, how did that feel, Jean Pierre? I mean, you've an Emmy. You have an Emmy. And how did I that feel? I actually have two. You have two, <laughs> right? Well, you were also. I not... won another one in nineteen ninety one for the the lot. You know, uh, this book that I put out, Heidi. Uh, yes, Jean Pierre. It, it's only um, it's only Heidi. twelve years. I know. I, I had uh, like twelve years before this. And I spent another 24 years afterwards and did things like... Well, I have your entire list of everything. And I, heart and soul. You and, did... Uh, believe it or not, <laughs> I'm walking on air. You did American Hero. Yes, the greatest American oh, Hero. One of my him. favorite shows. Another blonde. And Airwolf. And I, you know, I, I, I've been called a cult designer. And it's really kind of true because all my following... I. You have no idea. I, I, you have I a have huge thousands following. Thousands of fan members, but they're all involved in cult things, films Ooh. that were never huge films. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of fans for Airwolf. And do you know that there's fans for Somewhere in Time and for the last. In I other know, time 30, zones, yes. In other galaxies. They, they meet <laughs> at Mackinac Island at the Grand Hotel where we filmed this, the film. And they dress in 20th, early uh, 20th century uh, co- uh, costumes. Mm-hmm. And they have dinner in the Grand Hotel, the Grand Dining Room with an orchestra playing. And they dance to old, you know, turn of the century in music. Jean-Pierre and costumes. And then they go watch Somewhere in Time. And they do this year after year. They're, they're just dedicated people who love the film. So it's very, it's very honoring to think that there are so many people that I have done some good for in life, and I'm very appreciative. I, like I, clothe them sexy without showing too much cleavage. I mean, your costumes are... I don't believe are... in peekaboo shows. I never have. Well, that's I mean, what my mother told me. I didn't know. Me. I did not know my cleavage was showing at my grandmother's funeral, and I apologized to grandmother, but she thought it was pretty, so it was fine. Just go ahead, jump here. Did not my name to to told me years ago that you never served dessert before the first course. Oh, well, the what? <laughs> what is so, that? I think, um, I think class and style very important. and sophistication replaces everything else. I always have. And I've always tried to bring that uh, to my work. I'm not saying I haven't done risque things. Costumes. I've done tons the of them. The naked I mean, truth. He's naked on the book cover. You've run around naked before. You're probably naked right now in Hawaii. I've been a nudist my entire life. I love to go off to Isn't it great? places, take yeah. off my clothes, and not have to deal with anyone or or anything, and no no Ooh, scruples and no mm. morals. And I I think people should be free and uh, yeah. try to live their life as wonderfully as possible. I'm sure that's what your mother told you. <laughs> well, she, well, she did, but I had to wear clothes doing it, and that was and that was fine. Just sometimes she would shake me into the Jordache jeans, you know, because that was Brooke Shields. You know, she was the Jordache gal, but my parents would shake me by the belt buckles. And I and Calvin Klein, remember? She did the Calvin Klein uh, thing. Whoops! Either way, I had them all. I had Calvin Klein, Jordache, Sassoon with the little hand that you would shake, and I'd be like, oh, shake right, my exactly. hand, boys. Shake my hand. I was such a tease. I didn't want to kiss him at all, but they all liked me. I would just go, hello, hee hee, and run away. It was bad, but I think, you know, it was probably inspired by Brooke Shields. Nothing comes in between me and my Calvins. I'm sorry, I thought it was a Jordache, but that's a horse, and, you know, maybe they don't belong inside the Calvin. <laughs> Whoops, did I just say that? You know, those little horsey dittos, like the horseshoe on your rear end? I mean, right, everything's I about know. animals, you know? <laughs> Sorry, but All those so, logos. I want you to come back and uh, design, uh, you know, the Heidi Selexa clothes on the show and we'll have you be the personal designer and we can do, you know, spandex in a classy way. And how does that sound, Jean-Pierre? Well, give you a blonde wig and put it 
a staple in your navel. Oh, that's right. I have to sing it for you. It looks like Marilyn Ooh. <laughs> with your spandex dress. As a matter of fact, <laughs> let's do it now. I have my little birthday song for you because you, Jean-Pierre, had just had a birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, last month, yeah. Last month you had a birthday, and you, you look so fabulous. I've I've looked at all of your photos online. I mean, the only ones I could find, which were like 500. And uh, I have an entire list of your everything that you've ever done. Uh, let's see. You were nominated for an Oscar for the best costume design in Somewhere in Time. Then you won the uh, Primetime Grammy for uh, The Lot and uh, also, um, you know, costume design for miniseries special. And you did the, um, you know, Quantum Leap and uh, more Quantum Leap and uh, Galactica. And, and, a, and a wonderful film Tales of that the Monkey. nobody ever saw called Mae West about Mae West Live. Why didn't anybody see One the movie? Of the most beautiful films I ever worked I, on. I know, I love her. Right? Oh, it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful film. And I also was so fortunate that right afterwards, I sort of was on a streak with women's bios and wonderful mothers, no less. And I got to do the Rosemary Clooney story, <gasps> and oh. it was all about Rosemary's breakdown with drugs and the pressure of Hollywood. Right. And when I get to, went to meet Rosemary, I took this magazine coloring book that I had found in black and white, and you were supposed to color in the pictures, and it said oh. Rosemary's teddy bear and Rosemary's wardrobe and Rosemary's dressing table. And when Rosemary looked at it, she laughed, and she goes, Yes, but where are Rosemary's drugs? <laughs> well, <laughs> and she was they're in the seeming. Far, one of the most wonderful, wonderful women with her feet on the ground, oh. and talk about a talent and a voice. She and the and Sandra Locke, who played her in the film, was absolutely stunning and and brilliant, and brought so much of Rosemary to the character. Uh, it, we had a wonderful cast. Uh, it was one of my very favorite. It was a television movie, and um, uh, uh, the actor Jackie Cooper, who was way back from the 20s, he directed it because he had known Rosemary all of his life. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, I wish they would bring it back again somewhere so people could see it because it was, in, it was very inspiring about how difficult it is this business is it's a it's like a minefield and you, it's you a must fester. be prepared you can't come to the city thinking you're going to do it by being a hot number because hot numbers don't last very long do you unless uh, you're, you're wearing young, but back in the 50s there was this mm. talk about been there done that and everything old comes back again there was this w actress who was Miss Hotsy Totsy, her name was Vicky Dugan, and they called her the back because she wore dresses that were not only backless, but they were so low in the back you could see the crack of <laughs> you know what. Oh, yeah, and baby. She was the all over cleavage. the place, and Woo! she did like about four <laughs> films and lasted like six years and ended up, the last thing she did in her career was a walk-on where she wasn't even credited. So I'm telling you, um, study she, hard did, and uh, yeah, and so don't rely upon, you know, the TNA because mm -hmm. it's not really going to get you anywhere. But you were saying that she, no, it's not. And that's and that's good that you brought that up. It's important for, for people to come to the city uh, with self-confidence. You don't come here, you don't come here looking for your self-esteem or your self-confidence or your sense of well-being. You need to already have that in check so when you get the you know the jealous people or the the haters or the ones who are just having a bad day or the angry people you know just you know, trying to knock you down and it's it's hit after hit you're like oh, I already know where I'm going so eventually I'm gonna end up there and it's not gonna bother me but a lot of people come here looking for their self-esteem let's not go there right now um, so the well that's good that's good to bring it up because you're so right and it's so good that people are to some extent, beginning to understand it. Yeah, they are. I think it's. I think you're wonderful to present this on your program, and I also I think cannot thank you enough for taking the interest to include me today. I um, I'm very honored. I I have had a great time. You're a, 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 you you are the hostess with the mostest. Ooh, you, and, thank you. Um, I, I look forward to meeting you in person. And yes, perhaps we can do your show live.
I would you. love it if you came in and we can do costumes and we can change. You know, you can change me and put me in things and show me what works and doesn't. What I was going to ask you is, you know, nowadays they have a lot of clothes that uh, either a don't have uh, the back to be able to wear a bra without showing your bra strap. Which when I grew up, I was always told that was inappropriate. And b they're see through. So what you can do to help us ladies you know, not walk around town um, inappropriate and naked uh, because apparently that's not going to get you, you know, out of the friend zone or in it. Either way, it's the wrong zone to be in. <laughs> uh, you know, Heidi, I, uh, I've always um, said to each their own, uh, said the lady as she kissed the as she stooped to kiss the cow. <laughs> so everybody should really do what they want to do. I, 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 oh, I'm, I'm totally out of fashion anymore. Oh, well, I you think you are, you know. Ross you, okay. showing, and I just, you know, I just, it's you, part of today's uh, fad. Fads don't last long. They'll go away. You know, in my lifetime, I've been through platform heels five times. Oh. becoming the latest fad for women to wear. And most of the time they last six months and everybody breaks their ankle and that's oh, the end of that. Nicki Minaj, like, <laughs> what the heck? She looks so ridiculous. She's not, she's barely like an inch at a time with her. She's like, but the shoes are pretty. They're pretty. It's all about the shoes. I actually have them on right now, Jean-Pierre. I wish you were watching because I could show you my platform shoes. <laughs> These are so 60s and 70s, aren't they? You'll see when you get to watch it back. You didn't see under my panties, did you? Yes, no, the, the what do you mean, yes? platforms came in back in the 40s where Joan Crawford I wore know. them with Hildebrand. But then they came back. So, Jean-Pierre, I have got... They came back again in the, in the 60s when the hippies wore them. Oh, that would be me. And, uh, and then they came back again, I don't remember, three or four times, and I guess they're in style again. Um... Uh, I love them. I have them on now. There's a whole part in my book where I was taken to the Golden Globes uh, ceremonies at, in 1972 when men were even wearing platform shoes. Mm. And I talk about how it was hard for me to keep my cool and my posture at the same time. <laughs> and other you things. were stumbling around <laughs> and weaving on the things. And, <laughs> Uh, I never wore them after that. Well, you know, once is enough. Yeah, well, well yeah, I, I have them on now. I'll have to show you when you come back to town. Thank you so much, Jean-Pierre. Now, listen, in the studio right now, I've, I want you, when you come back into town, to meet them. They're fabulous. They do my hair and makeup. Um, I don't know if you saw a recent photo, but my hair is, well, it's just gorgeous. It's Heidi's Hair Salon. I don't own it, but I should. Um, it, and so I have them in here now, and they would love to have you into the salon when you come back. So, oh, thank them very much. It's very gracious. And I, I've got a, I've got a little birthday song for you because you did work with Marilyn Monroe. Did you get to see her naked? No, no, no. I never worked with her. I just met her. That's all. Did you see her naked? <laughs> no, unfortunately, I really, you know. Damn it! I, I, I want to talk no, to somebody who saw her naked. In a nice dress, a sweater, actually. I've got my white uh, Marilyn Monroe dress on for you for your birthday song. And what was she wearing? Was she wearing white, or was she wearing pink, or what was she wearing when you met her? Oh, she was wearing a black sweater with some cream pants. I saw on the... Cream uh, pants? And I was going through a soundstage door on 20th Century Fox, and she was coming out. And uh, I held the door open for her, and she smiled and, and gave me a wink and said, Thank you, in her very deep... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Rappy voice. <laughs> Thank you, Jean-Pierre. And next time you want to try out spandex on anyone, just came to me. I'm Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> no, she wouldn't have said it as seductive as I just did. That was a little. That was a little seductive. You are so awesome. Can I sing my birthday song for you? Because you had a birthday yeah, and I missed sure, it. Go ahead. And uh, Jean Pierre is going to be the. Uh, well, his new book, The Naked Truth, is available on Amazon. Where else is it available on Amazon? Go and to the website www. Jean Pierre with a hyphen Dorleac dot com. Yep. Jean Pierre Dorleac. D O R L E A C. All one word. Jean Pierre. Yes. Um, so I, Jean, I would have a little birthday song for you. Would you like to hear it? Go for it, girl. You want me to sing it for you, boy? Mm-hmm. Oh wait, let me get my let me get my candle for you. Hang on, I have to get my light and my candle. Hang on, <laughs> I'm getting my light and my. Oh, whoops! Did I just bend over? 
It's a good thing I was wearing spandex. What did I just do? Did I pop the, what did I do? <laughs> what, I showed my panties? No, it was set. It was wait a minute, Jean-Pierre, apparently I bent over and showed my panties and the engineer's mad at me. And then my hairstylist, what, no, Alvy, was that hot? It was that was it, I'm Jean-Pierre, apparently I bent over and I bent <laughs> over and showed my, did I do that? Did it really show? Oh my oh. God, the demographics just went right through the roof. <laughs> well, I, well, I'm telling you, the thing is, is I've got the white Marilyn Monroe dress on for you, and it comes to a certain part of my legs, which are very fit and toned, but when you bend over backwards, it may show a little more than the fit and toned. How much more did it show? Did it look good or bad? It looked great? Okay, well, don't worry about it then. Oh my God, when did I become, so no wonder why I have a mother who's always fighting me. She's like, Heidi, put some clothes on. <laughs> on that note, Jean-Pierre, I'd like to sing happy birthday to you. Are you ready? I'm ready. Uh, he seems a little bored. Are you Good sure to you... go. <laughs> He's like, get it on here. I'm in Hawaii. I need to run around naked on the beach with a margarita. <laughs> I have to do a wedding in another hour. <laughs> oh, well, let me, let, let me, let me hurry up. I got to get dressed, honey. <laughs> oh, you're naked. Well, this is the perfect sign. <laughs> Let's do the birthday song while you're naked. Are you ready? <clears throat> Happy birthday to you. Oh, wait, that's the wrong one. <clears throat> I, I don't sing, but I can do this. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear. Wait, we're wrong tone. Let me do that again. <laughs> no, this is fun for me. It's a little practice. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Jean-Pierre. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Let me blow out Oh, my God. Candle. You know what? My other line's calling. It's American Idol. They want to sign you. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I suck. Goodbye, darling. Have a wonderful day. Do I suck that bad? I, I know. No, I'm not trying to sing well. I'm just trying to do a birthday song for you. <laughs> Let me blow now, okay? I love you, Jump Here. We'll see you when you get back. Thank you. Happy birthday, Jean Pierre. Check out Thank the Naked you. Truth. Bye. The Naked Truth. You can get it now on Amazon.com. He's doing a wedding in an hour in Hawaii. Wow, it's a middle of the night wedding. Either that or I suck that bad. <laughs> Was it really that bad? I'd like to bring on my guests, um, in-studio guests. They're here to sponsor me. Was it bad? Do I sing really bad, you guys? No, you didn't. Who cares? What? I own it. I don't care if I sing bad. <laughs> Who was claiming to be a singer? I was sexy, right? It doesn't matter if I'm sexy. I didn't mean to show my panties, though. Jarvis, my engineer, is like, you did it. Don't do it. <laughs> He's like, yes, mommy. So I'd like to bring on Heidi's Hair Salon. They are <laughs> Heidi's Hair Salon. They did my hair and makeup today. They are the most amazing hair salon. And they are my in-studio guest. And uh, they're wonderful. And they are fabulous. And I, the reason why I'm bringing them on, first of all, it's Mother's Day. And mothers like to be treated. I don't know about your mom, but whenever I go see my mom and I buy her something, if she's in the worst mood ever, I'm always like, you know what, mom? I went online and I found this thing. And she's like, oh, oh, really? And she just feels so much love. And, you know, she lives in Vegas and, you know, with my stepdad and sometimes she's not a big gambler. She feels kind of isolated out there. She's an active woman and she likes to do things and uh, she likes to look good. She gets her nails and her hair done every day. I grew up having um, the facialist and the waxing people come over to our house and do that uh, all the time and it was weekly so I was getting my leg wha legs whacked at 13 it was like <laughs> what so I finally shaved once because I hurt and then she got mad at me and that was a big fight for a few years you know because she didn't want my hair to grow back you know like razors but anyway enough of that what, where'd that come from you guys are like, what the hell is she talking about? <laughs> no, I'm just saying I'm really into beauty care because of my mother. But mothers are into beauty care. And even if, you know, they're too busy or they've spent all their money on you, wasting all of their time on you. I mean, look how smooth my legs are. Mercedes. She yes. owns. Ooh, sexy legs. Thank you. You can feel them. <laughs> um, well, th see, Javier is not here. He would feel them. Never mind. I don't need people to feel my legs. We would but make him feel them. 
<laughs> Jarvis is like, let me feel. So moms need to feel good and they should feel good. And you should do something nice for your mom because all the times that she took you to get your hair cut and the braces on your teeth and the dentist and you crying about some, you know, boyfriend in your PMS and your period. And then the boys saying, get away from me. I like my girlfriend better than you. And she doesn't like, you know, me, but I don't care. All the times your mother stuck up for you, all the times that your mother did things that were great. You need to appreciate her. And sometimes moms just need to be pampered. They need to, for a moment, realize they're a person. They are not just a mother. Their entire purpose in life is not just to take care of you. Um, and a lot of the times we don't realize that. We think we can call our mothers up at any time and say, Mom, I need something. Mom, we never say, Hi, Mom, how are you? Mom, I thought about this for you. Mom, I saw this today for you. I was in a store and I thought, wow, this dress would be great on her. Wow, maybe my mother would like the new hair treatment. Maybe my mother gets headaches and would like the new headache shampoo that gets rid of the headaches, which, by the way, <laughs> Heidi Salon has. Yeah, we have it. You have that, too, for yeah. mothers. So welcome to the program, you guys. I like to welcome Mercedes. Mercedes, you. you can talk. She's beautiful. And she Thank speaks. You. She doesn't speak real good English. She says she doesn't, but I know she understands me because <laughs> I'm talking and talking, and she's not nodding and nodding uh you know so i know she understands me don't be afraid to talk we can even speak spanish even though i don't speak it jean pierre you know spoke french a little bit and i didn't understand him but i faked it so say hi hi okay you're so shy <laughs> alvi so feel free to talk up he just Hello, did his everyone. hair red today isn't that cute yeah he just, i did especially for you doll you did it because last week you showed me where my little red yeah. beard my i little... mean you went blonde so why wouldn't i go red hair <laughs> Hey, that was Mercedes thing. By the way, I drove, I, I'm in LA, I'm in Hollywood, and I have to be, I have to know where salons are all the time for last minute audition or last minute radio show or last minute appearance or last minute have to meet, you know, and I'm not going to be rude, I have to go out and meet a guest or a band, you know, somewhere <laughs> late at night, and I'm like, I don't want to get ready. It's hard. I always have to get ready and pimpered up, and it's just too much sometimes. I, I don't like to wear makeup. Thank you to age interventionist Renee Lynn. I don't have to all the time, which is, she's one of my sponsors. But, um, so I drove by, you guys are literally just a few blocks from where I live. And um, I drove by and I was like, wait a minute, I'm going to check them out. Because I just had my nails done. I had new acrylic nails on. And they had previously been done awful. Oh my God, way too much money. They broke. And I was like, I'm just going to go right here. I can guarantee you whatever instinct I have that said, go into Heidi's. And I had been checking you out for like a year. And all I was doing was driving by Melrose, going to the 101 freeway. And I was like, I have to go in there. And so finally I went in there one day. And then, you know, Alvy did the best nails I've ever had. Thank you, doll. And they lasted like three weeks. They did. Until yeah. you fell. Well, <laughs> I did. I, I, clean, I mopped the floor and it was <laughs> sticky, sli sli slippery stuff is what it was. And I yeah. actually like, I'm surprised I didn't crack my head open. But, you know, it was all because of the nails. They were so hard that it just, they protected me from having a head injury thank you Alfie. you're welcome <laughs> they were like a shield for your protection it was, it was a shield it was really wonderful isn't he gorgeous <laughs> he actually has done a lot of modeling and uh, he'll be my my Heidi boy toy I would love it you show everyone the Heidi uh, selects apron that you have on I love it's it too giggle and my, giggle and my apron is so cute isn't it cute it's my apron I have like the cutest girl here <laughs> Isn't it and cute? It's signed. It's signed. Yes. I'm keeping this by can... the way. Oh, whoa. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was like, wait, well, you could do make, you could do people's like nails and makeup and hair when you wear it. I would love that. <laughs> it would be like a privilege. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. You guys Thank are great. You. So I drove by and I walked in. And I said, well, I don't know what they charge for a nail fill, but, you know, sometimes we don't want to spend 40 bucks on it. And I was like, wow, they're fantastic. You guys were fast. You were good. You were open. And, and every look at my hair. Like it was it was pretty before, but it was not really that pretty. I had dead ends, split ends, and it was just one color. It's pretty when I take care of it, but I had enough time. It's very gorgeous. Now, look what they did today. See how gorgeous my hair is? Beautiful. It's sexy. <laughs> Very hot. It's, 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 well, you did it. Uh, you did it. I walked in and uh, she she spoke, you know, English and Spanish, Spanglish. And I said, well, I don't know, but whatever she did to her hair looks great. So I trust her. <laughs> and then I came out a blonde. And look at me. I get whistled down the street. I get followed all the time. <laughs> right? It was. I was like, wow, I can't go anywhere without you know, some kind of protection, <laughs> you know, where's my husband? And <laughs> thanks to Mercedes. And then you do my makeup before the show. Cause I don't like to wear makeup when I'm not on the air and 
you guys always do a fabulous job and every time i go Thank in there you. it's just your prices are great and you guys do great service so some of the services you have for mother's day you're a mother mercedes and yes. you named your salon heidi yes what's the story be behind that was it a, a little dog that you liked or a wiener dog no she is she's my daughter <laughs> <laughs> i know it is but <laughs> go ahead and interpret yeah, yeah. no she gets it so you you just decided you like the name heidi yes okay yeah. she's my she's my daughter yeah, I know. Yeah. But how did you... But normally, um, from Mexico, we don't name people Heidi, which is mm. great. I think we should. Everyone should be Heidi. <laughs> except the I dogs. I mother. But no dogs. Oh. <laughs> no, I love the dogs. I don't want them to be named my, after me. But go ahead. What was that? No, we're from El Salvador. Salvadorian. Oh, okay. Yeah. El Salvadorian. Mm -hmm. But you spell it H-E-I-D-I. -I, yeah. Which is the way I spell it, which is really cool. <laughs> Thank you. Because I was telling him today, I said most people spell it H E I D Y. But that's so you guys do nails, you do waxing. You, what is the new shampoo that you have for headaches? What, what right now we have a new shampoo and it's actually from Salerm. It's uh -huh. like a Spaniard brand. And a, it really a what brand? Helps, um, from Spain. Oh, it's a Spaniard brand. Yeah, and it helps like your scalp and your head. Mm -hmm. So if you've been having like a stressing day or mm -hmm. you're not very relaxed, that will actually do the job. Like, trust me, we've been there, we use it, and it really works. You guys get headaches in there when people come in and say, I want this done with my hair. You did it wrong. Do it over again. You know what? Yeah. We love our customers, yeah. but I think everyone always has, like, a stressing day. It's LA. Right. The traffic, the heat, the weather. So everyone has to try the shampoo. It's the best. Oh, yeah. I mean, I I never worry anymore because you guys are closed. I can either walk or drive, and I just walk in. I'm like, I'm here. I need help. And they're like, okay, just come on in. And, uh, you know, so Mercedes, thank you for opening up your salon and doing a great job because you, you. your hair is beautiful. You are beautiful. Thanks. And you always say to me, why are you not married? <laughs> you always say that to me. Why are you not married? And I say, well, you're pretty. Yeah. Thank you. But you know what? I know I told you I had the dream where I, I, I am. He's coming. Like I met yeah. his name is Jim. <gasps> I did. I didn't tell you that Jarvis. Did I? You're laughing because I had the premonition dream. He's on his way. <clears throat> well, yeah. Well, you think that's a joke? No. <laughs> we won't go in the other part apparently i'm supposed to be dead in three years no it that's not it it no. was like no he had adopted an older son and he said you're gonna die and i don't know and then someone i said why did he say that i said oh don't worry he just doesn't when he gets upset <laughs> but he has three younger kids and uh, we're really in love and i'm super close with his ex-wife we raised the kids together i have lipstick on my teeth do you guys want to fix me up here we do we gotta fix that up. My gosh, am I supposed to fix me up? Thank you, Jarvis. You must always do that. Thank you to my engineer. Oh, somebody spilled one. I got him drunk earlier, and I apologize, girls, but when you go to the salon, sometimes you gotta get them drunk when they're done with their job. Thank you. I, I can do it. You have to always keep your eye on my teeth. Uh, you know, I don't know what's up. We have to fix Heidi with the right lipstick so we don't smear it. Anyway, so um, happy Mother's Day to you, Mercedes. Thank you. And uh, for, for moms, do we have any kind of specials that we can give them for Mother's Day so everyone knows? Yes, we do. We have a special for makeup, uh -huh. blow dry. Oh. And manicure and pedicure for a hundred dollars. Yeah! Wow! <laughs> for Mother's Day. Yeah. So um, makeup, blow dry, manicure, pedicure for a hundred dollars. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And you guys are on the corner of Melrose and uh, Western. It's right on Melrose and Western. It's right across from the car wash and the tie, uh, the the new um, cross training fit place. And uh, they can just come in, or can they call you, or how can how can we get them the Walk Mother's Day special? Walk-ins are welcome, and or they could also make an appointment as long as they mention Heidi on the radio. Okay, we will give them that special just because of you, gorgeous. Oh, you are gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Oh my God, we were talking about lovers earlier, and we didn't get to that. But I think I'll have Alvy back too to play on the radio. <laughs> oh, let's let me hold that up for you. This is your um. This is your special. It's um, your makeup services. You also do makeup application for forty five dollars, which yeah. they did today on me. So pretty. Who looks pretty? Uh, makeup application lashes. Oh, I love the lashes. By the way, uh, everyone wants lashes. That's what it is. All you need is lashes, lashes and lipstick. You don't really need more than that. But for special occasions, you want that. Um, you can also just put the fake, you know, lashes like I have on now for ten dollars. And um, then you can also there's deals for three makeup applications for one twenty, which is super cool. Somebody can just come in and say, "Look, I got all these events coming up. I'm just gonna, you know, pay for it now and come in and get my makeup done." So thank you so much, you guys. Thank Melrose you. and Western. It's Heidi's Salon, and uh, you know you can give them a ring. What's the number? Eric? code 323 let me look on my cell phone i call it every day 323 let me just Whoa. get it. 
Let me look at my black book. See the Nail salon. No, not not the X. <laughs> the number is 323-462-1485. Yay, happy Mother's Day. So make sure and go there. And if you haven't need a last minute gift, every mom wants a salon. They also do head massages, every kind of massage that they do. I'm Heidi Selexa, and I'd like to thank... Dr. Craig Thede at SoCalOralSurgery.com for being this official sponsor of the Heidi Selexa Show for great teeth, fresh breath, and learning how to keep yourself up. Also, Renee Lynn with TheAgeInterventionist.com because she does the most amazing skin and it's homeopathic, it's healthcare, it is non-surgery. Do I have lipstick on my tooth again? Hello? God, where was my mouth? Been? There, it's off. <laughs> Alfie, I thought you took it off before. It went back. <laughs> what was your finger doing in there? <laughs> and also, <laughs> Heidi Salon. So uh, make sure you guys go and get all of the Mother's Day gifts for all of those three. Ageinterventionist.com, which Renee Lynn, and she's got the most amazing skincare products. Look at me. I look like I'm 12, and I'm just 25, right? Okay, not. Uh, thank you so much, Renee. Also, to SoCalOralSurgery.com, Dr. Craig Thede. If you know anyone who's been in a bar lately, maybe got a tooth knocked out and just needs a little repair, uh, he does it in an hour. He can also do an entire mouth in 24 hours, but he will always be there for you. He will call you over his assistant, uh, and he will be there for you 24 hours a day to make sure you are feeling well. He also does cleft surgeries. People fly from all over the world to see him. Dr. Craig Thede, SoCalOralSurgery.com. Thank Thank you to the Tooth Godfather for sponsoring this show. I'm Heidi Selexa, and you are listening out of the friend zone. Enjoy. Happy Mother's Day. Bye, you guys. Thank you so much. Heidi Selexa, out of the friend zone.